All right, good afternoon. I was going to write a very brief shell script, and I figure I might take you along for the ride. Um, this is a very, it's going to be a very simple script. It's really just going to be a case statement with a couple more things added on. Here's the problem that I want to solve. Um, in case you don't know, there are two different ways of doing sound, volume, and everything on Linux, okay? So there's ALSA. ALSA is what's dis you know, installed by default on all the Linux distributions. It's a standard uh, Linux sound system. I think it stands for something like that. Um, so these are the commands for changing volume, for muting, for toggling the mute of the master, uh, you know, out, uh, output or whatever it is, um, sync, I guess they call them in ALSA. I always forget. But this is for changing volume, muting your volume on ALSA. But there are a lot of Linux distributions that use also Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio is some stuff that you install on top of ALSA. Some people call it bloat, some people call it very useful, but these are the commands for doing the same thing in Pulse Audio. And these are uh, specifically binds that uh, increase the volume by 5%, decrease it by 5%, increase it by 15, decrease it by 15. The reason I have these particular numbers is those are things that are actually key binds on my computer. So if I press, uh, you know, uh, hold down the mod key and plus press plus, it increases my volume by five points or decreases it if I press minus, stuff like that. So anyway, I just wanna automate that. I wanna have a wrapper that instead of having to know these two commands or these two types of commands, I just wanna have a script that can choose which one is the correct one to run. And this is just so people who, you, who are using my dot files don't have to you know, reset all of my bindings if they wanna use Pulse Audio, okay? Um, so here's how I'm going to start. I'm going to start by naming the script LMC. Now if you've been around a while, you know I used to have a script that did something similar that was named LMC. Uh, and I'm just going to say it stands for Luke's Music Control. Well, I guess it's not necessarily music, but you know, whatever. So I'm going to say it's a shell script in our shebang here. And I'm also going to go ahead and make this executable by running change mod uh, plus X on it. So now it can be executed. So to be clear, I'm also in um, local bin, which happens to be in my path directory. Uh, I expect you know what that is. If you don't look it up, it's just the folders that you can run a script directly from. So I don't have to, I can just type LMC as opposed to its exact location. Okay, so here's how I want it to work. I want to be able to write, run this. I want to be able to run, let's say, LMC toggle, and it's going to pick either the ALSA or the Pulse Audio version to run, but it's going to run that command. Or LMC up, increase the volume. Um, so let's start at a basic level, level. I'm just going to put in the ALSA commands at the start. So how I want to do that, if we're reading the first argument, the first thing you give that script, up or toggle, you're going to want to do something like this, okay? So I'm going to say, just as an example, um, case argument one in, uh, we'll say toggle, okay? And I'll explain what that is if you're lost already. Uh, master toggle. Notice I'm just copying that command over there, okay? Uh, so this is how a case statement looks if you don't know anything about shell scripting. Uh, basically, it says, okay, take dollar sign one. Dollar sign one means, again, the argument you give it. Okay, so in this case, if I run this LMC up, it, up is going to be dollar sign one. Or if I run it as down, the string down is going to be dollar sign one. But in this case, uh, check dollar sign one. If it's equal to toggle, do this. Okay, so if it's equal to toggle, uh, toggle the, the volume to be either. Uh, mute or unmute, okay? So I also want uh, a command for just muting it. So I'm gonna change this to mute. In the case that I give it the mute command, run all this, a mixer, s set, master, mute, okay? If I give it the up command, okay, I want it to do this. I want it to do a mixer, set, master, and then we'll say five, percent increase. That's just the idiosyncratic syntax of ALSA. Uh, and the same thing for down, okay? Down is nearly the same thing, except for this is going to be a minus, right? We're just looking at the commands over here. And let's just throw in these 50. We're going to change this in just a second, but just as an example, we'll go ahead and put in these 15% uh, commands. But we have to call them something different. Let's call it big down and big 
uh, and uh, oops, excuse me, uh, big down and big up. Oops, I went one extra back. Okay, so just to be clear, what did we just do? Um, we made a little script here, and how it's going, what it's, what it is going to do is it's going to, if I run LMC down, it's going to run that command that decreases our audio. So now it is 68%. If we run it again, it's going to decrease it by 5% to 62. I know that's not exactly 5%, but that's not how all a mixer actually works. It's it sometimes it'll be a little bit different, uh, but it's working. Okay, so we can go down down 5% or we can go up 5% or we can toggle the mute. Okay? So you might be wondering what is all this output it's giving me? This is just um, this is just the typical output of a mixer. If we want to suppress all of that, I can just say de, you know, put the entire state uh, case statement to dev null, meaning instead of uh, showing me what it's doing, it's just going to, it should automatically, uh, excuse me, uh, suppress all of this output, okay? Um, now to be clear, uh, up here in my status bar, you'll see I actually do have a volume thingy up here that shows how, what my volume is, um, but it has to be manually updated by running this command that's at the bottom. So I'm actually going to put this in my script. That is, let me, the reason I have it like this, some status bars that are a little more memory intensive, they're always checking to see like what your volume is. Mine, you have to manually tell it, oh, I've changed this, so update my volume. And this is the command that does it. So now if I run LMC up now, uh, it's going to update my volume. Actually, it's muted right now. Let me uh, unmute it. So we'll say toggle, okay? So now it has toggled this and you'll see the volume so we can change it, you know, to up. Now it's gone up, stuff like, stuff like that. It's very small up there, but you can see that it's working. Okay, so we've integrated our also commands in here, but how are we gonna put in pulse audio, all right? Now there are different things you can do here. Oh, actually, before I even do that, let's make something easier. I think it's ugly for us to have big up and big down as separate commands because really they're basically the same as up and down right? We can integrate these into one thing. So let's say I want to do this. Let's say I want to say, um, let's say I want this uh, LMC up five to mean go up by 5% or up 10 to mean go up by 10%. Well, we can pretty easily change this. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, and by the way, this is going to make these two commands uh, obsolete because we can just give them 15 in this context. So let's say I'm gonna replace five with the variable num, okay? That's a variable I haven't defined yet, but let's define it. Let's say num is gonna be equal to this. Now I'm gonna do something a little special here. Um, I'll explain what this is in a second, okay? So what this is saying is the following. Now, as I said, dollar sign one, that of course is going to be your first argument. Dollar sign two, this is what this is, is going to be your second argument. And what this is saying is define num as the following. Define it as dollar sign two, your second argument. But if you don't explicitly say what that is, let's say if we just run LMC up, assign the variable or assign the value five to that. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. That means if I run LMC up, it is going to increase my volume by 5%. You can check it going up in my, uh, you know, my thing up there. Or if I say down, it's going to go down 5%. Uh, whereas if I say down 10, it's going to go down by 10%. Or if I say up 30, it's going to go up by 30%. All right, that's what that is. And this is a very terse way of saying that. That is, um, use argument 2. If argument 2 doesn't exist, just assume we're going to use 5. Okay, that's all this line is saying. And it actually says a lot for one little tiny line. Okay, so now we've got, we've got a good bit of stuff here now, uh, but we don't have the main thing we were actually making the script for, and that is use either ALSA or Pulse Mixer. Okay, we only have the ALSA command. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna change about the script. I'm actually gonna take this stuff and copy it out, and I'm gonna put it over here. I'm actually gonna change it a little bit. I'm gonna redefine I'm gonna make these all defining functions, okay? What I mean by that is we're gonna do this. Well, let's move these over first off. And I'm gonna change this. I'm going to add, use some Vim magic here. 
to make these all functions. Okay, so we're going to, yeah. All right, so now these are all, we've, what we've done is we've defined these as functions. Now we have a function called toggle, and what that does is runs this command. Uh, so we can actually go down here and we can replace all this stuff with just us calling the functions. Now you might be like, okay, why, why are you doing this? That doesn't make any sense. You're just, uh, you're just moving things out of the case statement. You're just defining functions. Wouldn't it be a waste to do that? No, the, the good thing is now is we can define, we can have a check to check if we are running either ALSA or Pulse Audio. And if we're running ALSA, we can define the functions like this. If we're running Pulse Audio, we can define the functions in a different way, okay? So let's just say, um, we'll start, we'll, we'll just do it this way. We'll say this. We'll say Pulse equal to true, all right? And we'll say, if you're a Pulse user, all you have to do to make your my dot files compatible with the script is you come in here and you unset, you uncomment this line. So Pulse equals true. And here's what we're gonna say. If Pulse equals true, if the variable Pulse equals true, then uh, we're gonna, well, we'll do some stuff in a second, but we're gonna define the functions with their pulse definitions, which we'll do in a second. Otherwise, define the functions like this. These are their alpha, uh, ALSA definitions, okay? Uh, oops, I don't mean else, I mean close your if statement. So to be clear, here's what we wanna do. We wanna define the statements, how we want them to look in pulse audio in this area, whereas our ALSA statements are already here. We've, we've already finished for that. So let's actually, so now all we have to do, so I'm gonna copy this stuff and I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna replace all the also commands with pulse audio commands, these pulse mixer commands, which I'm not actually familiar with, but whatever. Um, I'll just copy them blindly because I haven't used pulse audio in a long time. So toggle mute, okay. And we'll replace that as well, except for it's only mute. And then here we have what? We have Pulse mixer change change charge volume. Now if I edited videos, this would be a nice time to edit out, but you know I don't do that. We don't do that on this channel. We're real here. Okay, so I think that's it. All right, so we've redefined all these functions. I'll check them later. Uh, and here's how it works. Now this script can handle if you're running Pulse Audio or if you're running ALSA. All you do in this case is you come in here and you check if you wanna switch the Pulse, if you've installed Pulse Audio, you, you come here and you uncomment this line and you will be running Pulse Audio commands. So now, just to double check, so we can increase our volume, we can increase it by 20, we can decrease it by 50 or something like that. Uh, we can mute it. Okay, we can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, toggle the mute. And now if we're Pulse Audio users, we can come in here and automatically, uh, you know, change everything. Now, of course, there are ways of checking to see if you're running Pulse Audio right now, just to be clear. I, I know because if I don't note it, people will say, oh, well, you could have done this. Here, for example, is one example. Uh, we could say this, instead of saying, make up this variable that you just define um, as be, you know, you if you have pulse, define this variable. L you could do something like this. You could say this, let's say pgrep x pulse audio. Okay, so pgrep, it checks to see if a process is, is running. X means it has to be exactly, it has to look exactly like this. Now, if I run this, it's not gonna have output. But if I started running pulse audio, it would return for it would return true, it would return the value, the uh, uh, process number of pulse audio. Okay, so what, what you could do is you could replace that instead of saying if blah, 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 you could say if uh, pgrep x pulse audio, okay? And that every time you ran the script, it would check to see if pulse audio is running. If it is running, it would run a pulse audio command. If it's not running, it would run something else. Now you might, you might say, well, why don't you just do this, Luke? Um, it's a little bloated. I'll just say uh, if I ran pgrep, let's run it actually. pgrep x pulse 
audio, okay? PGRAP just takes a little bit of time. It takes probably even a little more time now that I'm recording uh, video, but let's just try it out. You see, it takes like, you know, a third of a second, okay? And if I'm running an audio command to change my volume or mute it or something like that, I don't really want that kind of latency, so I'm not gonna put it in there. But if you're using a task where, a, a, you know, a third of a second doesn't really matter, you might want to consider that. Or you might know some smarter way to test for if Pulse Audio is running or not. And you can go ahead and tell me. Uh, maybe there's some environmental variable that Pulse Audio sets or something like that. Um, there might be some kind of file you could check. But either way, this will do pretty much simple enough. So anyway, um, this video has been a little disjointed. We've talked about different things, but I really just wanted to put out the process, like what my mindset is when I'm, I'm going through uh, writing a shell script. Um, very simple. Uh, you get things done pretty quickly and it actually has it's very useful to me because I'll probably be using this in my dot files and it'll probably avoid a lot of uh, uh, Headaches on some people's you know, just so they don't have to worry They don't have to recompile DWM if they want to use uh, pulse audio. All right, that's it I'll see you guys next time